Hello and welcome to this tutorial where I will be demonstrating the first few critical steps on how to successfully connect and communicate on VATSIM. In this tutorial I will start by talking briefly about the VATSIM concept itself. I will continue on to the options you have for client-side applications and show you how to correctly set up FSN for a VATSIM session. VATSIM recently turned 10 years. And uh, if you have ever played on a multiplayer server in your flight sim, the concept of online flying is something you're already acquainted with. VATSIM is a persistent online network to which simulator pilots and ATC log on to have fun and share the simulator world with each other. At any one time, there can be hundreds of pilots in ATC online being able to interact. Unlike a multiplayer server, uh, however, you don't log into VATSIM via multiplayer lobby in your sim. Instead, you start your sim in free flight mode and start a third party application that will connect you to VATSIM. You have two choices in regards to um, third party applications either Squawk Box or FSN. In this uh, tutorial, I will be using FSN. Uh, links to both the applications will be provided in the description. The installation of FSN is not difficult. You just need to know that FSN is already no, is re really two applications instead of just one. The first one is called Copilot or FS Copilot, and the other one is called FSN. To many, I'm sure this sounds archaic and complicated, but thankfully the installation is usually quite smooth and unproblematic. You install Copilot first and FSN last, and it won't allow you to do it the other way around, so it's pretty failsafe. Before I continue, I'd just like to add that you need to register for VATSIM account to get your unique VATSIM ID and set up your password. The link... Uh, to uh, register is provided and um, it's quite easy and it has no cost. So you have your uh, FSN and Copilot installed. Now we need to start our sim. So you uh, select your aircraft uh, of choice. I'll be choosing the PMTG uh, 737-800 and uh, I will be logging into uh, the airport at my capital city Oslo Galdemund and uh, what's important is you never spawn in on the runway always choose a gate when you're going for uh, FSN it's uh, quite important well real time is pretty uh, dark now it's uh, close to midnight so I'll just set it to daytime So, when uh, we're finished loading soon, uh, I will uh, we'll show you that there are two ways to start your FSN. Uh, first, though, a little word about Copilot. Copilot is a prerequisite program that uh, FSN needs to run. And if you uh, install it with standard settings, it will start automatically when you start your sim. If you didn't, you... Um, can find it here on Start, Programs, and FSFDT, and it's called the Control Panel. So you click that, and you get your shiny baubles down here, and uh, it makes it possible for you to log in. So uh, you can start your FSN client via the internal add-ons menu here, Copilot and control panel. Um, a word of caution, if you have installed a traffic add-on like my traffic or uh, ultimate traffic, it might cause your sim to crash because the workload, what FSN does when it starts is to index all your aircraft and check that your, your um, um, catalog of aircraft is correct. This uh, can amount to quite a big workload if uh, you have a traffic add-on. It will amount to several thousand aircrafts 
and it, as I said, it caused my air sim to crash. So I just uh, used the external way to start it. It has no uh, real, um, uh, doesn't have any other effects, so it's uh, quite okay to do so. Choose your FSFDT map, and you want this one, FS in UI. So as you can see, it's loading up my aircrafts nicely now. If this was the first time, it would load for a long time. So luckily, it just does that one time. If you get any error message, you can just click Next. OK, so here we are. Here is the control panel. And um, unfortunately, you can't as a newbie just uh, use this right out of the box which uh, well they could have made it more user friendly you click and nothing happens uh, so what you need to do is you need to change the server settings you click the settings button down here you click the network and you click that sim uh, when you install Copilot, you would probably be asked for your VATSIM ID and password. Um, if you thought it's safe to enter it, which you should have, uh, but I understand if you didn't, you need to type that in here. If you uh, did it back uh, at the install of Copilot, it would be already typed in for you here now. You need to change this server. And uh, what you what you um, need is a server list. Um, there are various servers for different areas of the world, and I will provide a server list in the description of um, this um, video. So you just copy paste it into here. As you can see, there is no server list to load. So you just copy paste it, and uh, when you're done, you just click OK or you click close. There is no OK button. While we are here, I have two more things to show you. You need to go to peer-to-peer -peer and disable peer-to-peer -peer here, and disable it here as well. If you don't do it, you will get an aircraft probably spawning beneath you and will cause your TCAS T -cache to go haywire. So, and the next part is weather. We go to general and weather, and you need to disable weather by default and the reason is FSN has a bug. Instead of your temperature going colder the higher you go, when you pass flight level 2 to 5 or something like that, your uh, temperature will start to climb instead and at uh, flight level 3, 5, 0 you can experience temperatures of plus 50 degrees centigrade, which will make you stall pretty quickly. So disable this. There we go. Lastly, uh, you type in uh, your your uh, ATC call sign and just click enter. Before we click VATSIM uh, here now, I'm just going to go through a few settings inside Copilot with you. Um, we go for config and options, and I prefer to have a Copilot start auto start when I start my FSN. If you don't like that, you can just disable it and you start it manually the way I showed you earlier via the start menu. Next part is the voice. You go to voice and that sim and you need to have this enabled on your computer and um, you select your voice uh, input and uh, sound output. Continue on to key mappings and you select your push to talk buttons. You can select uh, push to talk on your joystick or yoke and on your keyboard. When you've done these, also just to mention, we have a volume uh, mixer here, so you get these sliders up to the right to increase your volume. If you want something called realistic distortion uh, to simulate how uh, voice uh, sounds on the VHF band, you could click this. However, I like my sound uh, crisp and clear. There we go. Let's see if it worked. We This is uh, the connect button. As you see, it turns red when you fail to connect or you lose your connection. It will turn a bright green when you connect successfully. 
you will also hear a um, well a chime like that. 